Se-Yong laughs heartily, declaring that a lowly death mission could never stop his big brother, the strongest in the universe. Ho-Yong clenches his fist, holding himself back, wishing he could just beat the crap out of Se-Yong. Another player, Byung Chul, interrupts their reunion, raising an eyebrow as he asks if he really cleared the death mission. He adds that he's glad Ho-Yong is okay, but if he had cleared the mission, he should have gained a lot of experience points. Yet, they could see that his level was still stuck at 2. The other players start to talk among themselves, noting that he was still level 2 and wondering if it was like the rabbit mod, implying it might be nothing. Hearing their words, Ho Young reflects that he thought he had grown accustomed to it, but the world still insists on keeping the weak in their place. He recalls the time when he was a child and received his academic assessment result. He remembers people whispering behind his back, with a girl saying he topped the midterm, and a boy accusing him of cheating. Questioning how a pathetic orphan could get top marks without going to an academy, he thinks they can't allow a worm to wriggle about, so they want to step on it and crush it. Even after so many years, he's standing here again, surrounded by a mob mocking him. Someone suggests Ho Yun might have stayed hidden somewhere, biding his time before coming out like in the tutorial. Another player agrees, saying it makes sense, because of his level, he must have been hidden in a pit somewhere. Ho Yun grips his fist tightly thinking he already knows prejudiced people don't change their perspectives easily. Right now, what he needs to do is. But then someone interrupts, telling the others not to run their mouths so thoughtlessly. It's Yi Soul, who appears with a bleeding nose after Se Yong's body slam against her. Her voice is firm as she asks why the other players keep doubting him. She even points out that he already proved he survived the death mission. Ho Yun looks at her while she figures that the other players know nothing about him. Se-Yan also steps forward, agreeing with her and calling Yi Sol his big sister. He shouts at all the players that not only did they fail to hold a party to commemorate the glorious return of his big bro, but they even dared to ruin the mood. They've lost their minds, haven't they? Ho Yun looks at him, thinking he sounds like the craziest one, but smiles, feeling somewhat reassured. He knows that he needs everyone to survive in the tower, and if he wants that, he has to show them something convincing. Ho Yun calls out to everyone to get their attention, telling them that he needs to show them something. He appears with a red sword in his hand, a sword named Indomitable Sword, which has a rare rank and an attack power of plus 15%. With wide eyes, another player comments that the sword is basically a cheat key. A woman looks at her sword, noting that no information pops up for her old lawn's word. Jun Seong tells Ho Young he's impressed he kept the poison apple, noting that, as Yi Sol said, he's truly extraordinary. She feels glad for him, and he modestly says he was just lucky. Jun Seong adds that such a valuable item is more crucial for their survival than gaining a few experience points. Hearing those words about their survival causes our boy's demeanor to shift as he points out that they seem to have forgotten how they nearly drove him to his death. A heavy silence falls as they all become at a loss for words. Even Se Yong and Yi Sol are speechless at what he just said. Jun Ho steps forward and admits that Ho Young is right. With his head down in shame, he confesses he justified it by thinking it couldn't be helped, but realizes it was pure selfishness. He continues, saying they knew voting for Ho Young, the one with the lowest level, was like silently targeting him and throwing him into a deadly situation to save themselves. He bows in front of Ho Young, apologizing with tears streaming down his face, saying he's truly glad he came back alive. Ho Young and the others look at him in silence. A woman with a carefree attitude asks why he goes that far, noting that someone had to go anyway and Ho Young even came back with a rare item, so it's all good, isn't it? Jun Ho shouts at her, asking how she could think that way, addressing her as Eun Jin, and asking if she feels the slightest bit of guilt. Eun Jin counters that it's not for him to say when he voted for Ho Young before anyone else. Hearing this, Ho Young stops Jun Ho from saying more, explaining that the reason he brought it up wasn't to reprimand them but to stop it from happening again. He points out that they must have already caught on during the death mission voting, but the tower is trying to divide them. It's provoking distrust among them, causing conflicts, and probably enjoying sending them on a path to ruin. He believes his return from the death mission is an opportunity because it proves their actions can defy the tower's intentions. Jun Seong asks him if he has a plan for the future. He replies that he'll search for ways for most people to survive and will keep climbing the tower. They'll climb higher and higher, and when they reach the end someday, they'll be able to get their lives back, won't they? The players all agree with what he is saying. Yi Sol shouts that in order to do that, everyone here will have to join hands. Ho Young agrees with her. Jun Ho, with teary eyes and a smiling face, thinks Ho Young is a generous man, 
and they shouldn't have judged him by something trivial like his level. They then hear a voice saying how unfortunate it is, and Kum Kum enters the safe zone once again, announcing that the next mission is a survival game. Looking at him, someone asks why it's here again. Another player asks if he was giving them stat points this time too. Ho Young feels a slight chill as he asks what the survival mission means. Kum Kum laughs, calling him quick, and explains that the mission for level 2 involves a battle royale among the 15 players present. Everyone looks in pure shock. He winks at everyone to cheer them up, adding that since it's a lower level, it's just a mild taste for them all, so cheer up. He explains the rules of the level 2 mission, there will be 16 players and 16 doppelgangers, making a total of 32 people. To clear the mission, they must kill the doppelgangers. The doppelgangers will have the same stats and memories as the players, making it challenging. The most important rule is number 3, which is that there's no reward for a player killing a doppelganger. But if a player kills another player, they can obtain stat points in gold. In other words, this mission could be an opportunity for them. People start shouting, saying he's basically telling them to kill each other. Kum Kum twists its finger, adding that every 30 minutes without a kill will result in everyone being summoned to the lobby to face a huge disaster. A purple light appears, and people panic, shouting, asking what it is. Looking at a claw coming out of the lightning, someone points it out. Ho Young's legs freeze as he looks at the giant monster coming out from the portal, with an unknown level. Jun Ho shouts for him to get out of the way, but Ho Young is stunned, thinking that Kum Kum expects them to fight that thing. A thunderous explosion erupts, throwing everyone to the ground. Ho Young gazes up at the colossal monster towering before him, thinking, this is truly a disaster. A man nearby trembles, questioning if this nightmare is real, wondering how they are supposed to fight it when they barely made it past the first floor. A woman, her face pale with fear, pleads desperately for help, not wanting to die. Observing the chaos, Ho Young realizes that panic has overtaken everyone. The monster lets out a deepening roar, its massive fist poised to strike a nearby man. Ho Young quickly intervenes, helping the man evade the attack. Grateful, the man thanks him, but Ho Young, still bewildered, wonders why this creature is here when the second floor's mission hasn't even started yet. Kum Kum, with a hint of sarcasm, comments on how terrifying the monster is. Reflecting on Kum Kum's earlier words, Ho Young recalls the warning that if no kill occurs every 30 minutes, everyone would be immediately summoned to the lobby to face a huge disaster. He speculates they might be staging this spectacle to make them take the mission seriously. And if that's the case, then this is merely a preview of the trials ahead, and the monster isn't truly trying to harm them. But that thought quickly disappears as the giant monster's attack sends everyone flying behind him. Jun Seong and Se Yong fight the monster with all their might, shooting arrows and throwing boulders, but it remains unfazed. Jun Seong, frustrated, exclaims that nothing is happening no matter how many arrows he fires, while Kim Se Yong curses in exasperation. Watching their futile efforts, Ho Young grits his teeth, thinking this might not be just for show, and starts to wonder if the monster is genuinely trying to kill them. His attention is drawn to Yi Sol, who, while healing the injured, declares she has no more mana left. Seeing the injured, Ho Young acknowledges that although no one has died yet, that won't remain the case for long. A man shouts a warning as the monster prepares for another attack. Ho Young commands everyone to stand back, understanding there's no time for hesitation. He charges forward, his mind racing non-stop. Jun Ho shouts at him to get away, but Ho Young, lost in determination, knows that if he can't stop the monster, everyone will die. With resolute focus, he considers the synergy between the indomitable sword and his stab skill. Charging at the monster with level 8 basic swordsmanship, he hopes his attack might have an effect. Suddenly, the monster dissipates into the wind, leaving everyone staring in stunned silence. Ho Young, equally shocked, processes the unexpected turn of events. The stunned silence breaks as everyone starts cheering and chanting his name. Ho Young, still holding the sword, marvels at its power, wondering if it's truly that strong. He feels that this experience is unlike anything he has ever encountered. Then, he notices a status window indicating that he will be in an exhausted state for three minutes due to overexertion. He exclaims in disbelief and collapses, thinking he is doomed as his name echoes around him. Moments later, Ho Young regains consciousness to find people calling his name. The status window shows that his exhausted state has been lifted. As he pants, he hears Yi Sol and Jun Seong expressing concern, while Jun Ho, with eyes gleaming, admires his humility despite his strength, even finding his fainting at the last moment perfect. 
Struggling to his feet, Ho Yang, feeling lightheaded, asks what happened to the huge disaster. Jun Ho begins to explain, but Kun Kun interjects, revealing that the monster was sent back and that this was just a prelude to make them serious about the mission. Ho Yang, with a stunned expression, realizes it was indeed just a test. Kun Kun adds that it wasn't very exciting because everyone was too friendly despite nearly dying. It also brings their attention to the rule that a kill must happen every 30 minutes, which implies that the people beside them might be their killers. A chilling silence envelops the crowd. Kum Kum declares its message delivered and disappears. Gritting his teeth, Ho Young wonders if there's no way to counter this situation. The blue light appears again, and Jun Ho grimly states that if they can't identify the fakes, they will have to kill each other. Another player urges them to find a solution quickly. Someone suggests marking everyone since the fakes share their memories. Another man questions what they should do next. Ho Young draws their attention as he says he has an idea. Yi Sol, intrigued, asks what he has in mind. Ho Young proposes that during the mission, only he will act while everyone else gathers at the highest place on the second floor. If anyone else takes action, they should be considered a fake and dealt with accordingly. A bulky man, level 9 on Se Chong, a former special forces member and a specialist in survival, questions the plan. A woman, skeptical of Ho Young's low level, asks why they should follow his plan. Ho Young reminds them of Kum Kum's warning that there is no reward for killing a fake, but a player who kills another player gains stat points in gold. He knew that the instructions were asking them to fight the doppelgangers, but he emphasizes that the tower wants them to kill each other, not the fakes, and he refuses to play by the tower's rules any longer, believing this is the best solution. But the same woman isn't convinced by our boy, but then Jun Seon raises his hand and agrees with the plan, suggesting they could minimize as much damage done to them in this way. He then asks Ho Young if he can identify the fakes. Ho Young grins confidently, thinking that of course, he can. In the forest, the status window indicates the second floor's mission is starting and reminds them that they must kill at least one person within 30 minutes. There are 16 players and 16 fakes. Se Young, traveling by himself, is annoyed by the risky plan, and hides behind a tree. A voice calls out, noting his size makes him easy to spot. Relieved, Se Young comes out after recognizing Ho Young and expresses his relief, as he thought his big brother was a fake. But with a swift slash, Ho Young splits Se Young's body in two, ending his life in an instant. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.